So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Eric and Joseph, for inviting me to answer this question. Can we refine the selection for adjuvant treatment in colon cancer? So in my uh, bookshelf, uh, I have this book for a long time, this textbook, Cancer Medicine, that was published in 1973. Looking at this uh, book, at uh, chapter 24, uh, table 12.6, you have the five-year survival in patients with colon cancer, and as you can see, patients with Duke C, or stage three patients today, had a five-year overall survival between six and 28%. So the first step in the adjuvant therapy came with this study published by Mertel in 1990, showing that the combination of 5-FU and levamisole reduced the risk of relapse by 41% and the risk of death by 33%. A few years later, they published their uh, survival, and the five-year over survival with patients treated with 5 fu and levamisole, stage three, was 63%. This huge improvement, but as you can see on the slide, the control arm, those patients who did not receive treatment, have a 50% uh, five-year overall survival, meaning that a huge benefit was also gained with uh, surgery and everything that is around surgery. So then we moved to 5-FU and uh, uh, Lecovorin with many trials, and we learned that uh, six months and 12 months were equivalent, but we have no strong data to say that three months is enough with fluoropyrimidine regarding the results that we have in IDEA. Low dose recovery was equivalent to high dose, and elderly patients also benefited to this uh, treatment. However, for some, like Norman Woolmark, they say that after this uh, first step, we enter in a decade of decadence because new drugs and, uh, went on negative trials, such as alpha interferon, altitrexed, hydrocolumab. But we learned some uh, new data like uh, the patient who have uh, MSI, this patient, when they are stage two, do not benefit of fluoropyrimidine. They may even have a deleterious effect. After that, uh, we developed improved regimen of leucovorin and 5-FU and the oral prodrugs for fluoropyrimidine. Then the second step came in 2004 with uh, Thierry André and the uh, first results of the mosaic trial that have uh, shown a further reduction in the risk of relapse uh, in the range of 22%. A few years later, we were able to publish the, the survival in uh, Mosaic, showing now that the five-year overall survival was 76% in patients with stage three. That is a 13% improvement over 5-FU and levamisole. So then uh, the inotecant trials were negative and other trials have confirmed the benefit of uh, oxaliplatin. And this is important slide also uh, regarding the future of IDEA. The benefit improves over time. Looking here at uh, overall survival in patients with stage three in mosaic, at three years, the benefit of survival was very limited, 3.2%. But looking further, even up to 10 years, the benefit was 8.1 percent. In uh, the patient with uh, stage 3 and N2, more than four uh, lymph nodes, the benefit of oxaliplatin is huge. 15 percent absolute benefit and in this patient who are scheduled to receive six months of chemotherapy. This also has to be uh, regarded with the results of uh, IDEA. So we also learned uh, after this trial that the patient with low risk do not benefit of oxaliplatin. Stage two low risk do not benefit from oxaliplatin. And there is a small benefit in the patient with high risk stage two. And at that time, high risk patients were defined as T4, uh, bowel obstruction, tumor perforation, poorly differentiated tumor, venous invasion, and less than 10 examined lymph nodes. But when you look at the two curves, uh, the low risk and the high risk in mosaic, there is not 
a large difference between high risk and low risk. We also learned from an, uh, a meta-analysis performed by Accent that elderly patients uh, do not uh, benefit of oxaliplatin to the same extent as the younger patients. However, gender effect should be also studied, and uh, at least uh, in mosaic, the, the women aged 70 to 75 did better than men and should have the benefit of uh, the combination. So is the last decade, uh, another decade of decadence. We have also our negative trials, bevacizumab and cetuximab. Bevacizumab in ACBP CU8 and Avant, cetuximab in NO1467 and PETAC8. We have also learned that uh, the subpopulation like elderly and stage two do not benefit that much of uh, the new therapy. However, I do not believe that it was a decade of decadence because we now can do better staging. We have new biomarkers and we have IDEA. So the first uh, thing, important thing is in the better staging is the lymph node status. It, we come back to 98 to see that uh, the patients who have more than six lymph nodes have a better prognosis than those in, in, with less than six uh, lymph nodes analyzed and uh, it's recommended to have more than 12 lymph nodes. So just here, just to show that the same patients in 2015 have now a five-year overall survival of 85%, 85% without changing our therapy. And this is uh, what was observed. Here you have the disease-free survival in the patient who is treated with fluoropyrimidine before uh, the rule to uh, have uh, at least 12 lymph nodes examined. The DFS remained constant over time. And with oxaliplatin, we have this effect. Uh, for the first uh, trials, improved the DFS, but the recent trials are doing better than mosaic. And this is obviously a Will Rogers effect, a stage migration. The patients uh, in the patient with stage two in the past with not so many lymph nodes examined, uh, there were some stage three that are now recognized. So you, the, this patient moved from the stage two to the stage three. Doing that, they improve the results in the stage two, but they also improve the results in the stage three. It's what was, was observed. In comparing the, the three years of our survival in mosaic with the recent trials, FOLFOX4 was 84% in mosaic. It moved to 86% with uh, CAPOX and 87.9% uh, in NO147 and 90% in AVANT. Looking at three year disease free survival with the same regimen FOLFOX4 in mosaic and AVANT, a benefit of 4% in three year disease free survival, a benefit of 9% in five year overall survival, 13% in patients stage three with less than four lymph nodes, and 10% of those who, with more than 10 lymph nodes, more than four lymph nodes. Uh, we know also the, the story of left and right colon in the adjuvant setting. Patients with uh, stage two do slightly better if they have a right colon than the left colon, and it is the opposite in stage three, where the left colon is doing better than the right colon. It is also true with oxaliplatin. In Folfox, you have the stage two with uh, the right doing better, and uh, the, in the stage three, the left doing better. This is mainly driven, I believe, by the survival after relapse. Obviously, the survival is much better in left colon after relapse when they are treated with Folfox. We have new pronostic uh, factors like uh, BMI. This was uh, published in 2013. Patients obese or underweight are not doing so well, especially the male patients. And this uh, new uh, approach uh, of the pronostic factors uh, has been uh, entered in a web calculator that is available at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, we learned also about our new myo biomarkers like Kiras, BRAF, and MSI. Uh, this has been shown by uh, Julien Tayeb that uh, the, the patients with uh, are microsatellite stable 
have a poor prognosis in case of uh, mutation, and while the MSC patients have a good prognosis in case of uh, BRAF and Keras mutations. We know also that uh, oxaliplatin is, in, is active in stage 3 MSI on the small series of patients treated here in, in uh, mosaic, and also the patients with uh, BRAF uh, tumors. So we, we still need a lot of uh, much better biomarkers. We need the predictive biomarkers, and really to define the stage 2 patients who should be treated, the stage 3 patient who could not be treated, the patient who could benefit of fox platin, and the patient who could benefit from new therapies. Uh, one of these uh, predictive biomarkers could be the pyotrichinase uh, mutation. If this biomarker is there, some drugs like aspirin may have a very good uh, effect. However, among the biomarkers that we have at the present time, these biomarkers are only prognostic. Either the gene signature, like the recurrent score or coloprint, or the, the gluconid cyclase 2C expression in lymph nodes, immune score, CDX2, and uh, consensus uh, molecular staging. However, uh, looking back at our uh, prognostic factors, we can build a new definition for stage two and stage three. Like here, this, is, this will be a study in accent, so they're just the preliminary results only on the mosaic data, including in stage two, age, BMI, CA, perforation, sex, and site. And you see that you can separate much better the stage two patient that uh, it was done with our old uh, criteria. Now we have IDEA. IDEA, I will not repeat this uh, fantastic uh, uh, study with the six uh, trials and the, the large number. In the conclusion of uh, Mosaic, it uh, say that uh, in patients with low risk, stage 3 low risk, T1 to T3 N1, the recommendation of, of adjuvant therapy can be three months. Yes, three months with uh, KPOX appear to be uh, the valid, very, very valid option. And in the patient with higher risk, T2 and or uh, T4 and or then 2, here uh, might, that might be a preference for six months therapy. Here I will just say that in my mind, here we, the, the benefit is so huge with Folfox in this setting. The, the, we have the non inferiority demonstrated for CAPOX and the superiority demonstrated with Folfox that. Uh, I would prefer to give the 12 cycles like uh, Mayor Hart uh, in uh, the, uh, at the ASCO. And in fact, uh, uh, we need a lot to learn from IDEA. I'm sure in the future we will learn a lot, uh, especially the per protocol results. The per protocol results mean for non inferiority to have the results in the patient who receive three months and the patient who effectively receive six months because there are so many reasons, to uh, uh, pragmatic reasons to stop the treatment that uh, the inferiority should also be assessed on the per protocol results and also when overall survival will be mature. So, and for the future, what is ongoing? Uh, looking back at the clinicaltrials.gov to the 334 uh, studies and uh, discarding all that is not relevant for uh, our practice, Three, 30, only 30 trials are ongoing, uh, including uh, 10, 10 trials with more than 1,000 patients, among them five IDEA, because they are still not published, uh, and zero trials were industry-sponsored. Among the drugs that are studied, uh, except the IDEA or IDEA-like done in Korea, aspirin, regorafenib, uh, selecoxib, tegafur, atelizumab, and the combination of irinotecon and oxaliplatin are the only drugs that are tested today. So in conclusion, I would say the answer to my question is that the selection for adjuvant treatment in colon cancer can be refined for better staging using multi-parameters beyond T and N, like BMI, the side in the Mayo Clinic calculator, because satellite status and including new pronostic biomarkers if available to uh, define the risk of recurrence. 
The low risk patients, we say patients with a risk between 3 and 10%, so that is stage 2, with or without a MSI, should go on surveillance. Intermediate risk patients, risk 10 to 25%, so the stage 2, because that is stable, or stage 3, T1, T3, N1, can receive fluoropyminine alone when the risk is very low, 15%, or Kepox 3 months, preferred to uh, fall Fox. And high-risk patient with a risk of 25%, uh, stage 2, T4B, stage 3, T4 and or N2 can be offered six months of Folfox or Capox. And in this group of patients, in case of toxicity, it's very easy to stop oxaliplatin based on the results of IDEA. Elderly patients can receive fluoropyrinine alone, especially male patients. But uh, we urgently need new drugs new biomarkers predictive, and clever new trials. Thank you.